This is the grade 3 math practice test for TN Ready. This is question number 15 on this version. Which equations and inequalities are true? So let's talk about equations versus inequalities. Equations is, of course, a term that says that the statement, the two sides are equal. 4 equals 4 is, the, is a very simple equation because it's true. The other, what does inequality mean? It means that one side is more than the other. So you have either this symbol or this symbol. They're greater than symbols, less than symbols, just depend on how you read it. If you get used to just making sure that they're set up correctly, it doesn't actually matter all that much. If I have this, both of those statements are true. This one says 3 is less than 6. This one says 6 is greater than 3. But to me, I don't think of them that way. I just think, okay, I want the... See, there's a big difference between this side and this side comparatively. So I want that big side next to the big number. And I want the side where there is much difference next to the little number. So if the distance between the two lines is small, put the small number there. If the distance is large, put the large number there. Your teacher might have shown you something with an alligator or Pac-Man if it was still 1990s and 80s. Um, I don't know, but to me, that's how I see it. Go with whatever they told you. That's fine. Now, the last statement says select three correct answers, which means if you select the first answer that's correct and you're done, you will miss the question. It depends on how they grade it, whether you'll lose all the points or just some of the points, but just do yourself a favor. If they put something in bold where it's dark like this, just do whatever it says because it's going to make sure that you are more likely to score points than not. All right, so the first one, there are a few things that you should know. We're going to talk about numerators and denominators here. Numerators are the numbers on top, and denominators are the numbers on the bottom. For me, so say this 3 out of 3, the bottom number tells me how many pieces I'll have in each group. So this is the total number of pieces. So that's what that looks like. This is how many pieces I have. So I'd fill that in, fill that in, fill that in, and it would fill in the whole thing. But I don't want to sit here and make you watch me try to shade this in. But just assume that it's all filled in perfectly. That's how that's going to go. If your number of pieces on the bottom down here is larger, like here, 6 over 8, it means that you're going to have one that's not filled in. So the 6 out of 8, whoops, uh-oh. Every once in a while, my pen will do that, and it, like, loses its mind. Oh, I know why it's doing it this time. There's a little button on the pen, and if I hit it, it always does that. Why would you keep hitting it? That's what I ask myself, too. Don't worry. So here's 8. If I only have 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, it's not going to fill up 1. So that's going to be less than 1. If I have a number like this one, where the numerator, the number on top, is bigger, it means I'm going to have multiple, like all these are filled in, so I'm going to have multiple groups. So again, if the numerator is smaller than the denominator, so this is smaller than this one, you're going to have not even a whole one. If they're equal, you're going to have a whole one. And if the number on the in the numerator, which is the number on top, is bigger than the number on the bottom, it means you're going to have multiple things, multiple whole things. All right, let's get to the actual question. So the first one says 6 over 6, and you may know that if I have 6 pieces and I have a group of just 6, then I fill up the whole thing, I have one whole. Or you can do 6 divided by 6 and get 1, that's fine. 3 divided by 3 works the same, so both of these are 1. So they're equal. So this statement is true. But what if you're all, I don't trust you. Okay, well, this is a calculator allowed section. It has the little symbol up here. See, there's the symbol. Calculator allowed. It even tells you. Then you could just do 6 divided by 6. You write that number down. And then 3 divided by 3. And write that number down. They're the same number, so it works. I'm going to scroll back up there to get that. Now, the next one, 5 eighths over 6 eighths. Well, the number of parts is the same for both. You'll notice the 8 and 8 are both here. So 
the pieces that I'm putting them in are what tells the story of the difference. So really, I'm just comparing 5 and 6. Well, 6 is greater than 5, so it would look like this, because 6 next to knee next to the big end. And this says 6 is greater than 5, so 6 eighths is greater than 5 eighths. Again, you don't trust me? Fine. I mean, I, I get it. I'm not like what you would call the most trustworthy dude. Unfortunately, I accidentally turned off my calculator. There we go. It's back. So you might do 5 divided by 8 and write down 0 0.625. And then you might do 6 divided by 8 and get 0 0.75. And I'm actually going to put them on top of each other, and I'm going to show you why. Because I can line up the decimal points and then just compare based off of place value. Uh-oh, doing that thing again. What's wrong with you, pin? Get your life together. There we go. And then this. So if you look, 0 and 0 are the same. But 7 is bigger than 6, so this is the greater number. 6 eighths greater than 5 eighths, just like I said before. You should have trusted me. We could have saved so much time. All right, for the next one, this says 4 over 1 is equal to 4 over 8. Well, I mean, generally speaking, if they have completely different numbers and there are different relationships between the numerator and the denominator, probably not going to be the same, right? So 4 divided by 1, if each group is, has 1, you have 4 total groups. If you don't trust that, 4 divided by 1 is a 4. Now, in this, you'll have a circle with eight spots, but only four of them, only four pieces, will go inside. And again, if you wanted to do the division, four divided by eight, you'd fill up half of it. Or if you just wanted to do the reduction of the fraction here, four goes into four one time, four goes into eight twice. No matter how you slice it, it's definitely not equal, so C is out. See your way out? I don't know. Whatever. So for this one, three sixths is greater than 3 over 1. That's possible, I guess. But again, let's look at the nature of the numbers that we have. 3, 6, this is, a, the numerator is bigger on the bottom, so I'm not going to have a whole. So I'm going to end up with something like this. And then 1, 2, 3 of them are going to be filled up. That looks like half of it, right? That's not enough. For this, I have the pieces are size 1, and I have 3 of them. So... These look like they're all filled in. So I don't think, based on what it says, it says that this is supposed to be bigger than this. Well, that's not true, because this has three holes, and this only has half of one, so that's out. If you want to test, feel free to do that. 3 divided by 6 is not even a whole number. It's 0.5. 3 divided by 1 is 3. So a whole 3 is going to be more than 3, 6. So this one's not correct. That's out. And finally, 2 fourths is less than 2 over 1. That seems reasonable. If I have the pictures here, I'll go ahead and draw these. Each of these, 2 over 1, each one of these is worth a full 1, and I have two of them. So I'm going to fill those in. But over here, I have a group of 4, because that's what the denominator says. But I have two of them filled in. half of the whole one is less than two big ones. So that's true. Yep, I'm happy with all that. So I'm going to choose this as an answer. Again, if you want to test, that's fine. 2 divided by 4 gives you 0 0.5. And then your 2 divided by 1 is going to give you 2, so it would look like this. And you just compare from left to right your columns, well, 2 is greater, so that's your big one. So it says something that's true. So the answer to this one would be A, B, and E. Sometimes they don't put E, and it's F, and I forget. But So it's A, B, and E for this one, and that's it. If you can use your calculator and you have one, it's a nice tool to have with you. But you really don't need a calculator on this question. You simply need to understand the relationships between greater than, less than, and equal. 
You need to tell the know the relationships or what it means if you have numerators and denominators that are different and numerators and denominators that are the same. If you get all those pieces, it makes working with fractions a lot easier as you move forward. So practice a little bit before the test and you should have it.